Oh yeah, levels. Because this has been set for singing. Hello, hello, hello. So is yeah. that like a regular di di dictation machine? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fucking awesome actually. It was a hundred quid. Yeah. And I thought it was broken for years. Well, a couple of years. Because these fucking shit chargeable batteries. Dum dum dum. Dum dum dum. Right, yeah. <coughs> so when was the last time you had like a d debate discussion like this? Oh god. What with someone? With someone else, yeah. I mean, I sort of, sort of had little debates with my son a lot. <laughs> yeah. And um, little chats with you know with other people, but. Filming, I don't think I've ever done this. I saw one video when you were sat with a lady and you were telling her <laughs> about your Messiah complex. Yeah. Yeah, and then there was like a Skype conversation you had with some guy. Yeah, so that was that was Dara. Yeah. That, is, uh, that was years ago. Though, Irish. Wasn't it? Yeah, no, he was, yeah, no, so that was, yeah, years ago. Well, and I watched yours. Yeah. No, I thought it was good. Really? Because sometimes when I sit and I'm just sat there talking by myself. It's not easy. No. Yeah. Because you, you, you get kind of like caught up a little bit sometimes and you forget what the next thing is you were going to say. And then you mention something and you think, fuck, I better explain that. Yeah. It's, it's hard, like it's the, hard I, to stay on track. Explaining and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, then had fun making that, and right? then trying to sort of keep a dialogue going, um, so, so that you're not being boring. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you're not just sat there just thinking to yourself, like, uh, yeah. I mean, in my earlier videos, I mean, they all have this sort of, the first five minutes or something, there's a lot of, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. and then, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I want to hear more about your theories about, if I remember this one video you had, it was, um, you were talking about reincarnation on different planets. Yeah. And obviously, like, yeah. But I, I thought that was based on the chakras. But you said that that's not based on the chakras, right? Yeah, I mean, currently, I don't believe that we do... I don't believe, generally, that we do reincarnate on different planets. Mm. That Earth has been our home. That's just my current... You know, I don't have any proof for that, but I kind of prefer that, and that... You know, there's a separate bunch of us who have been evolving on a different planet, mm. and one day we'll know about each other, and kind of the differences between our planets will be telling in a sense. So I just feel like Earth has been that our home, yeah, for all that time. I think in the Bible it talks about a second Earth, isn't it, and a second heaven as well. Yeah, well, I think that's 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 not to do with these other planets. I don't think these other planets have ever really been spoken about. Yeah, particularly. Um, I think that's to do with probably you know spirit world and stuff like that. Mm. So that's another thing I'm interested in. Is like how do you differentiate, or what do you think the connection is between the spirit universe or whatever and mm -hmm. this physical universe? So I think. I think I remember this correctly. When we was at the Turi together, yeah, and um, you were saying that you believe we exist in like three different universes at the same time. Yeah, they kind of converge into this three-dimensional space. No, uh, no. So think of this three-dimensional space as one of these realms. I like call them realms because yeah. they've got dimensions. They've got three dimensions: up, down, depth. Right. So it's like a realm. So this is the physical realm, mm. and I then like the word realm and well. then and then when we go to sleep, we're in this spiritual realm. I think of that as the spiritual realm. So dreams are insight into a different reality. It's almost like a mirror version of this place, yeah. in a way. It's just different. And then and then I think about so I think of it in a, in in a triangle. So you've got physical realm, spiritual realm, and then the dominant realm. Mm is like an emotional realm where everything's emotional but it's still got 
three dimensions, depth, height, width, you know, so an emotion can be over there and moving and okay. different type of emotion. It's like, and that's, I see as the dominant. That's where our, that's where, right, that's where our true possession is of self. We have an entity mm. that's capable of experiencing in all these different realms. How do you think each realm is caus causally connected? So I think they're all governed yeah. by the same time. Time is the same in all three. Okay. And truth is the same in all three. And that adds up to the 11 dimensions if you include time and truth as actual dimensions, but like, like constants. So when you're saying the 11 dimensions, because M theory speaks of 11 dimensions. Yeah. There's like five different ideas of string theory or whatever. Yeah. So you're saying that there's three universes with three dimensions of space and that equals nine dimensions. Yeah. But they're all still three dimensions. So like each each one is just the third dimension, right? Each one is comprised of three dimensions to give it that space to give How it. How do you define a dimension? Like a line, a single line is one dimension. Yeah. It's an axis you can travel along. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you, you know, then you can add two dimensions and now you've got an area you can travel around in. Do you know how you extend one dimension into a second dimension though? Do you know what angle each dimension has to pass through a dimension to create a new dimension in space? So I don't. So you was, you asked about how was this created? How is it linked together? Causally linked. How how are they linked? Yeah, like in. Well, you could just say they're linked in the sense that they're the only forms of reality. Yeah, but they exist separately, but also connected. They exist separately, but they are connected. In what physical way are they connected? They're kind of connected by us. Experiencing in them. Yeah. But do you know what? How, in order to take one dimension of space into a second dimension of space, the other dimension has to pass through a perpendicular, so an opposite angle. Well, you're talking about the sort of like the mechanics of it. Yeah. That I don't know. I haven't really. Because for something to be real, you know, something just is, isn't it? So but I it experience is, but it. It is by some way. It is this, by some mechanics. This just is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how like one dimension became two dimensions, and yeah, I don't know how that happened. But I was, I, but I do believe it was created. Mm. So the, let's look at the physical universe because that's what we can see. We've got these galaxies, and it's now known that in the centre of each of these big Massive spiral galaxies, galaxies is, a, is a black hole. Yeah. So I think if we went, to a young, if we went back in time when the universe was younger, I don't hole. believe those black holes always existed in the centre of the galaxy. At some point, they were born. Yeah. And, in, and at that point, when they were born, a new universe was created. Inside within, the black hole. Yeah. And that is basically when all those children's souls were first created, although they weren't really aware, they weren't, you know, capable of anything much. So if that say let's say that was four billion years ago, and then on Earth God created life so that we new souls could have an, a first experience of something. Okay. And then We'd, after a million times of doing that, we've grown somewhat. But and at some point, we we're capable for the self-awareness of what what we are. Mm -hmm. And they're like at this stage now, we've given these beings to experience in. Mm -hmm. And even when we go to sleep, we've got a spiritual version of it to go and experience See, still. Yeah. So there are two points then. Yeah. Which I'd like to add. Like, so, there is a lot of credence to the idea that the universe is a black hole. Like a black hole that exploded was one of Hawking's ideas. So I can see I can, I can see that making sense. But you think that each individual soul was created by the Big Bang? Or by the beginning of the universe? Well, I'm, I'm saying that, like, um, we, like, we are a galaxy. 
not in this universe. Oh, okay. In a newer one. So no, not, I see what you not mean. as evolved as this universe we're in. Mm. And that God is basically that galaxy, that Milky Way. Yeah. But mother and Father God, that's the physical possession that they've got. Okay. And they are, as our creator, they created the black hole within their galaxy. This is something which I'm actually writing about. Oh, well. That is part of my story, yeah. But that's, like, for me that's fiction. It's yeah. just a fictional way of telling the spiritual yeah. kind of ideas that I've got or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I can see where you're coming from with that. But there's um, something else, but you know the dreams, the dream idea? Yeah. But you said that you think dreams are kind of like our insight into a different state of reality where we are. So is each dream a different state of reality that we're experiencing, or is it all within the same realm, that, that spirit realm? Yeah, it's all within that spirit realm. But you know when you have a dream, mm -hmm. like, if you look back through all your dreams, yeah. surely, if you were to like, be analytical about it for a second, you'd see that each one seems to follow a different rule of physics. Each dream? Yeah. Like, some dreams will seem very 3D and quite physical, and some dreams will seem kind of phasey, like things are moving differently throughout the space that you've created that. Yeah, there's definitely weird shit that goes on. <laughs> yeah, it's dreams, isn't it? But, like, they, but for these mechanics to, to take place in a physical sense, in the spirit realm, like, they, they will have different, they follow different natural laws, it seems. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, I think in the spirit world that, that, it's not the same as this physical it's like I see this physical world as a very very you know true like you can't you, you know like that they've learned in science that's how they've been able to learn in science because things happen the same way yeah. you know there won't be cheating and stuff like that it's very physical you know I if we hurt ourselves too much we'll die yeah. whereas in a dream you, you can fall from a building and then you just wake up but you don't experience it doesn't death, it doesn't you? kill your spiritual body yeah yeah but if that, if so they are they're different in they're different in that way that it just allows more experience doesn't it we've got the the real world that we keep waking up to and that we're mm. stuck in basically and then we've got a more sort of freer experience in, in dreams in dreams it just gives it just gives good balance i think which is, you know, a lot of what I see, uh, balance is often a thing you should have. <laughs> well, good balance. <laughs> well, yeah. Especially when you're riding a bike, yeah. Balance just seems to work out. <laughs> yeah. Turn loud. So you think that, like, say if you have a dream last night, and yeah. obviously you've woken up so that dream's come to an end, do you think that if you fall asleep tonight and you have a dream, that's a continuation the previous night's dream. Not necessarily. So they are different realities, different realms that you're entering into. Well, yeah, but time has passed, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've seen this before. I've seen, I've been talking to someone in a dream and they've just disappeared. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking rude, isn't it? But I've also been talking to someone in a dream and then I've just woken up. Yeah. And for them, I probably just disappeared. So sharing dreams. I definitely believe so, but it's not always that way. I think you can you can you can have both. You, I th I do believe that you know we all seem to have a a dream place that we are quite often at. And yeah. It's usually like a, a sort of a town, a bit like the one you live in, but it's different. But these are archetypes, though, aren't they? Yeah. So I but but then you see you often see the same sort of people there as well. Yeah. Sometimes people you know, sometimes people you don't. Yeah. I mean, I've wandered about quite a lot in my dreams. I've noticed, like, over the last several years, I'm quite often. Well, are you walking around? And drive? No, I'm driving yeah. to places, and I'm not really quite sure. <laughs> you know, I can't remember exactly what it, but I seem to have been travelling about a bit, and I've noticed sometimes where other people are. Yeah. I'm thinking that's interesting that he was in the same place as this other guy, you know. Yeah. I mean I see people in dreams sometimes and they I think I said to you this I think I said said this to you when we were working together. Like sometimes you'll see someone in a dream and they seem like they stand out and they seem almost kind of surprised that you're there. Yeah, sometimes that makes me think like, Wow, is this person standing out in such a way 
and why do they react in such a way to me being there? Mm. And then, because some of the ideas I have, I can't help but wonder if they did have a dream where they were doing that thing and then they, they saw me and they wondered the same thing, like, how did this guy get here or whatever. Yeah, but the thing is, we remember such selected bits yeah. so that they may well have had it, but they didn't remember it. Yeah. I mean, it's the same if you speak to old friends, you know, we tend to remember different things. I mean, there'll be certain things that we every, all everyone remembers. Yeah. But then quite often, like, do you not remember? No, I don't remember that. So tell me more about your, um, um, your genetic ideas of, uh, the, carrying the experiences of our ancestors. I know you thought about this quite a lot. Yeah, but I think that's... Jesus thing, wasn't it? Well, I think there's... You see, I think because of reincarnation, I think you, you, you do both. You carry your own... You know, your previous life. You might, you might have accomplished things. You might have made mistakes. You probably did both, right? Yeah. So... In the, in the life after, there's going to be mistakes that you really don't want to make again. And they're going to be some of the strongest influences on your life, I think. But at the same time, you've been born into a physical body that has ancestors. Mm. And if you, after you pass, you care probably thinking about your descendants and how they're doing. Mm. And, you know, that's going to be big emotional part of you because that came from your own actions as well so so I think you're gonna get you're gonna get both things going on how do you think that works though because the, the thing which I, I think it works just because you know my granddad's died he's passed into the spirit world yeah and he's spe how much time he's spending there but there are things that he'll have emotional um, wants and desires for his descendants mm. and they will I think like talk about this emotional realm those emotions will exist until they're Thank reciprocated yeah. until they've been felt and and acted on in a sense well once they're felt that's that's the communication has got to its destination okay so like <clears throat> I understand what you're saying about experiences or emotions existing in a different realm or whatever, but like for that to affect this physical realm, it has to have some kind of causal thing which takes place. Yeah, we're the conduit. Yeah, because like we how... are the multi-dimensional things. The the science aren't going to be able to make an instrument to detect these. Well, I I I think that's because like I think we could detect that. I think it's probably is quite known already, because like, but the thing is though, could be this antimatter stuff they keep going on about, I suppose. Well, it's to do with the information being transferred and transformed, right? Like talking about the experiences of our ancestors being passed down within our physical cells that we can then experience. It's talking about the information that enters your brain or whatever, and then through various physiological events or whatever, that information is then encoded into genes and DNA and then pass on through physical lineage and then that causes because it's, it's about this it's about instinct do i say about instinct yeah and the physical manifestation of how instinct takes place and it's passed down because like what you experience is just information and that information that's going to be encoded transferred transformed it's going to affect your dna yeah. which is your genes yeah and that information is going to be passed into your children or whatever and then they will have those experiences on an instinctual level. Yeah. So that's so. So what you're saying, I think, doesn't have to have anything to do with another realm, because it's all answerable with their actual physical selves, and it's kind of observable as well, and, and also, in part, documented. Okay. So maybe it doesn't have to have it, but maybe it can do both. But if we want to. Maybe you've got a gradual thing in your DNA yeah, and that's driving you towards certain behaviours, certain instincts. What's to do with predisposition? But then, then you could, you know, have a dream of your great granddad, feel this amazing emotion mm. with the information in it and it could be done that way too. 
Yeah, but that also would be passed down genetically, right? If we want it, to, it prove... still it may it may still be, but yeah. you know whether there's a because I've heard this other from that AJ Miller, right? They mm. talked about a natural love path and a divine love path, and they're saying yes, there is a sort of a natural love path that you can take, and it will get you there in the end, but it will take ages mm. there's a you know a potential shortcut where you could go to god and and get the same distance like you know is that is that cheap quick though <laughs> is it isn't it better more fulfilling well it, i think the way of looking at it is that um you know it's like the the natural love path is like the plan b what's the it, natural love path though well it's like what it's like what you were saying in a way that you know, you don't need God, you don't need this emotional realm, you can you can just kind of go on naturally. Well, I didn't say we didn't need God. No, I, I know that, but mm. I, I was just trying to say it's, it's a bit like what they were saying with this natural love path and divine love path. Mm. And that you would get there eventually, but there's a, there's a way better and faster way to do it. Which one do you think God would most appreciate from you, though? In, in, in whichever way <coughs> <you're talking about. coughs> We, we should probably, like, that's just tobacco. No. Yeah, for your senses. Oh, no, I don't think that matters. The people it who definitely matters. smoke it's weed in on... this country. <laughs> you can only openly smoke weed in America. You're allowed to grow two plants in this country. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, but you're still not allowed to smoke it on YouTube. So if you edit this bit out, it just be like, this is tobacco. Like, yeah, otherwise you'll get a fucking strike. I've never had a strike for. Well, you don't know what your strikes are for, do you? Huh? <laughs> You've had several shows. I knew what they were for, yeah. <laughs> what were they for? Well, like, we well, probably shouldn't mention it. <laughs> yeah, probably. But they, they were for specific subjects that I had approached and made a video about. Are you talk like a Jesus thing. Like, but yeah, like, like, yeah. either. Yeah, but like, just to, to, to get back on track, right? <clears throat> you know your idea about the physical, the emotional and the spirit around whatever? It seems like it's going to be very, very difficult to prove them correct. So, so let's see if we can... No, it's not difficult to prove them correct. It's easy to think of them as though they're real, but to actually show them to be, to show them to be real is going to be very you have difficult. To, you, the only way you can prove them to be correct is, 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 is through a human. Yeah. Because a human is the only thing, at the moment, capable of experiencing all three of these realms. Do you not think that every conscious entity has the same type of experiences. You mean like a dog? A dog or a cat or a goldfish. I don't but think... something which is sentient and self-aware. Do you not think that they have a soul or something? Well, like a, an orangutan, Yeah. probably I would almost class as human. So they would have a soul? I, if they could, but yeah. there's got to be a line somewhere. Because I think, I don't think we're infinite number of souls. Mm. I think that, you know, when that black hole was created and the universe created inside, there's a certain number of galaxies that are going to grow in that universe, yeah. as there's a certain number of galaxies in this universe. So there is a certain number of children that God has. And that's what I see as a, a soul that needs development and growth before it, you know, before it doesn't depend so much on its creator. Okay. Like so, I do believe at the moment the the, the cross off line is is at you know where uh, let's say monkeys with a tail mm -hmm. don't have a soul, but if we went back ten million years ago, most of us would have been animals, yeah, having a more basic life. So what happens then as as we develop and we don't need to inhabit these lower creatures anymore? They're needed on the earth for the whole balance. Mm. So something else takes over the life force of that animal. And I think the most ones, the nearest ones to us, it would be God. It would be our mother and father God would be the life force in those animals. So some animals have souls, some animals don't. <clears throat> so I think now that there's so many humans alive, all the souls are kind of inhuman. So I just think it's at this time that that happens to be the case. 
So where is the cross-off line? I was, and let me just reiterate something. So like, mm. you know, I was saying it's going to be very hard through discussion or whatever to prove your idea to be true. Yeah. So it's, if we can't prove something, it's always a good idea to see if there are ways we can disprove it. Yeah. So like by trying to, but if we when we come up with an idea that we know we're never going to be able to prove in our lives or whatever, it's always a good idea to think of ways we can prove that to be wrong. But if it's difficult to prove, it's it's also probably difficult to disprove. It's going to be more difficult to prove correct than what it would be to prove to be false. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> so how can we prove your idea to be correct then? <laughs> well, how can you prove it to be incorrect? By coming up with an idea which makes more sense. Mm. This is kind of what I've done to get here. It's basically... I start off, you know, I'd get an idea, the idea would come from somewhere, I wouldn't force it, you know, the idea would come. And, and then that would change my understanding of the universe. Mm. And some ideas that would come that made, made me more uncomfortable, and some ideas would come that I liked. And the ones that I liked are ones I could live with, right? Yeah. So it kind you know, sort of partly developed like that. It was a. That was a, my idea was that I could communicate with God on a, on a level that I could ask God something and I could get an answer, a yes or a no, mm. and that was that feeling inside, of. Because I felt I'd felt God before, mm. right, so then if I can get into that level again, that sort of high enough where I can feel God. I can ask these questions or... So you believe that what you think is correct based on how you feel about it? Yeah. Okay. Because I've got so that... I think that's common. Yeah. And, and I do feel that, you know, I'm able to sort of check it with God, in a sense. Mm. Or sometimes, you know, there's definitely been occasions where I've had this idea, I'm really not sure. Mm. So it sort of kind of stays there and I, I, I live with it for a bit. And, you know, over a period of days, you know, I might have a couple of dreams or something, you know, which might influence how I feel about it. Okay. So I might not always be able to tell, like, there and then. But you'll mull it but, over. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll, eventually I'll get to a place where I think, you know... So if you think that um, there are a finite number of souls, do you think that... That God has made. Okay. So do you think... Is, is each individual soul a part of God? Like, is it, like, like is a, a child of God? But is it... A creation a of God. A part of God? I like, like a part, let's say, take a tree and where, the, and a branch where a branch of branches of off. Yeah. 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 So because you think that there, there are a finite number of souls which mm. are all intrinsically linked to God, yeah. do you think then that God himself or itself or whatever is also finite? Because there's only so much souls that we... So I so this 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 because we're gonna get into source in a minute. So, source. well, so so we're children of God, mm. but God was also a child of a God as well, and okay. had a hundred billion brothers and sisters. So each branch of the tree is like there's a hundred billion new branches from each branch. So then we, you know once we go back a few generations. Fuck me, there's a lot of universes and a lot of souls out there. So every god... <clears throat> to the point where I had a bit of a head pop once. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. So which is where... Are... which is it... But what... That then once you've gone back several generations, these souls have been existing for hundreds of billions of years. Mm -hmm. They've almost become like the source. The source of all which is love. So is there an actual god which is... The beginning. So that source. The, yeah. So source of all is just like, I see it as, you know, an entity is an engine and the source of it is the petrol that it needs to exist. So what's the engine of God then? So, we're, so God, is, God is an entity just like we are. Within and, the and, engine. And is ten right. billions of years ago was in a position we, like we are now, like a child, an infant in his existence. Yeah. But now God is like, now God has, you know, done the teenage years, 
been an adult and had children so who are now with there. Up and all that. So God's yeah, God, and God's probably still you know some twenty six year old. I mean that's why I think <laughs> families are such a a thing in in our existence. You know, mm. even as animals as well, we were brought up in a family. Yeah. We've done that so much that that must relate to something about our soul. So like, if God is born of a mother and a father, and they're born of mother and father as well. Mm. Where do they live their lives? Because if they're having families, they're having children, obviously they have lives that they lead, right? Yeah. How and where do they lead those You know, lives, obviously right? there's an element of fucking hell. How much of that can we comprehend at our stage now? What, what sort of things they do? But I have had some clues. Mm. And, and part of it is like I was saying before, there's... You know, when we don't need to inhabit these animals anymore, but they still exist, you know, wood lice and mm. everything, you know, who's the life force in those animals and how are they experiencing that? Mm. You know, how can you have multiple, how can you be multiple things? That's, you know, that's something that I don't quite know yet, but I did get the idea that, you know, for some of these creatures that just come and they get squashed and killed within a couple of days. <laughs> All they've experienced is a bit of sex and, you know, mm. you know, how much... I was thinking it was poss quite possible that it's God's grandfather or something that... Inside a bug. Yeah, yeah. because they, want, they, <laughs> they just want that feeling again of the sex for the first time or, mm. you know, they, that, that feeling or getting crushed and or challenges that you watch a spider go through to make his web, you know. Yeah, and and they're experiencing that on, on you know, lower universes. You know, maybe he's not even his son. Maybe it's his nephews. You're trying that one out. I don't know. But if if they've got to that point, what I've noticed about um, thinking about these things is, it's, it, you know, I have increased my capacity for love. And as as that as you feel, you know, even a little bit of increase in that, the positivity that you look upon existence increases. There, there's just you're just happier with it. So, so where, where does whatever it they're doing, <laughs> whatever they're doing, yeah. you can believe that they're happy, happier than we are. But can a happy God really create something which is less happy than it is happy? Because if God has like... Well, I suppose there's two el elements of that, isn't there? Because there's simplistic happiness. You know, if we look happen. back to the past, we're often thinking, oh, is not things so simple then? Well, mm. we just be happier. Mm. But there, there was also the more boredom, or, you know, you can see, like, the pros and cons. Mm. And I guess there's just enough. There's just enough to, be, to, to lean it on the pro side. Because the, one of the hardest things I ever faced during this was I'm in a position where I feel like I can, I can understand the whole of existence mm. and that I can almost choose if I want not to exist anymore. Mm. I've, I've really been there. I don't know if you have. Yeah. And making that choice, no, I want to, I want to exist, I want to keep going. Mm. They, you know, if I ever, it, uh, you know, they are they are like scary moments, where you almost feel like you could, you could, cease to exist, just by saying, okay, I'm done, I want to, I want to stop it. But you don't, you absolutely don't, because part of the reason, part of the thing that gets you there, is worrying that you might one day cease to exist. That kind of gets you into that frame of mind. But like, I, I still don't understand what you think the soul actually is, and what you think right. God so actually the soul, is. Right. So the soul, so the soul, is it? It lives in this emotional realm. But like, so it's a realm where it's just emotion. That's all that exists. Emotion. 
that is the the whole of this particularly and it's but it's like a universe it's like a universe like this one is but yeah. we're in our un our soul is in our universe which is a new universe and we are like a, a, a young milky way but it's okay saying that the grass is outside in the ground yeah but that doesn't say what the grass actually is or how it actually got there or what it what it's fundamentally made of like you know like well it, we know it's made of atoms and things yeah but does the grass help like, we're made of atoms our physical bodies does are. the grass have a soul because like, um, it was made from the same big bang that we were made from, yeah right yeah so the grass the grass that that physical aspect of that grass we're seeing. I mean, obviously, every blade of grass isn't its own, is it? You understand, grass no, it's a, it's can be quite a, yeah. an entity, can mm. be quite widespread, um, and there's a life force in it because it wants to grow. So there must it must be connected to a soul, mm. because without that wanting, if you didn't want to exist. That's like the light in your eyes, isn't it? That's mm. that's coming from the soul. So what's the soul? The soul is you. Okay, but like, what is it? <laughs> if you if like, for something to be real, it has to exist. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm saying, if you went into the black hole at the centre of the Milky Way, yeah. which is our parents' soul, okay, the physical aspect of it, oh, all cool. that stars and dust. Mm is the physical aspect of their soul. And if you went in that black hole, there'd be a hundred billion younger galaxies, mm. just say they're bits of plasma and light and dust and stuff, that's your possession. One of them is yours. And not just you, but you and your soulmate, because the, the two f masculine and feminine aspects, things which emit light, things which absorb light, they're different. But they both exist in the galaxy. Well, do you know how light is? And that is your phys, and you'll have a spiritual version of that, and you'll have a, a physical, an emotional version of that. So no, because we're looking at the physical. Yeah. And there's the spiritual dimension to it, and there's the emotional dimension to it. How that is you. That is your how, possession. But how are they linked together? How are they actually part of the same thing? The way everything is linked together, because it's the same throughout each universe. So what love source, whatever it created, yeah. it created this multi-dimensional realm. But what is the multi-dimensional And it holds realm? it together. Okay, but like, say I exist and I create that tree. Just, but you can't just say that tree exists because I created it and I exist. But like, like, how is that thing actually put together? What's the mechanic of it? Because like all these dimensions and stuff to actually be part of the same thing, it's not enough to say someone made it like that. You have to be like, well, this is how I would describe the mechanic, the mechanics of that existence. Yeah, I mean, I draw it in a triangle. Yeah. So I draw a triangle. So you would say then... And there's the... Because the, if, if you've see, you seen that video, My Existence Theory... I've seen a lot. It's so. got the numbers one to nine yeah. in a circle. And um, <clears throat> so th this might tell you something about how it's made. So you've got um, nine at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine at the top, six at this corner, three at that corner. Mm. Okay. So you've got here one, two, four, five, seven, eight. Yeah. Not involved at the moment. Double one, what do you get? Two. Double two, you get four. four. Double four, you get eight. Mm. Double eight, you get sixteen. So one plus six, seven. Double seven, you get fourteen. Mm. One plus four, five. Double five, you get ten. Back to one. And it's a pattern that when you draw it out, looks like the uh, infinity symbol. Yeah. So it's a pattern that goes on in infinitum, and then the three, six, and nine are separate because they denote each realm. And so that kind of that it sort of mathematically 
draws the 11 dimension system in a sense. Well I understand what the picture would look like and, and how you would have drawn the picture. Yeah. But as to further than that, I haven't delved. I haven't... The, we, I see the way the physical world is held together. We can yeah. see that with molecules and things like that, the way they bond together, right? We can saw a piece of wood and see how difficult it is. We can mm. split it down the grain different. You know, we we can you know we can do all that in the physical world. The spiritual world, you got. I've seen buildings. I've seen nature. You know, it seems to be similar. I haven't spent as much time sawing bits of wood. I, mm. I remember throwing some logs and making something like that. But, <laughs> but when you experience the emotional realm, how that's held together, it seems like you I only experience. You know, I feel feelings. They seem to come in certain directions sometimes. Or yeah, but I don't doubt. I don't wonder how it's put together because it just is and. And I can experience them, so I know they're there. But what you know is there is your ideas and your thoughts and the images that these things conjure inside your mind. The, the, all you actually know for sure is what your thoughts. Well, are. The, the feelings are the most knowing things. You know, you've probably heard like Bob Marley. Those who feel it knows it. Mm. The feeling is the most known thing, and I spent a long part of my life like cut. I didn't deal with feelings at all. I thought the best thing to do was just to, you know, have, you know, just if I was, if I had to have, you know, the highs and laugh a lot and then the cries, you know, I'd kind of got, well, okay, I'd, I'd rather not having the crying, so I'll, I'll just kind of flatline along in life. And I'd like, kind of lost connection with emotions almost totally. But do you think that and that was my downhill slope. That's when I t started to tackle that. I wanted mm. to feel an emotion. I wanted to get back into contact with that. Mm. That's that's when I stopped kind of going downhill. So you think that the world and the reality or whatever stems from our feelings of it? By the way, I was just going to say every time you touch this table, that might yeah. come out on that. Sorry. I <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's my chair actually. It's, it's like I'm not touching the thingy. Okay, cool. But do you think that the material world develops from our feelings of, of it then? Because it's like the law of attraction. Well, that would be a separate thing. I'm talking about. Oh. Do you think that the world is manifested, literally created because of our feelings? Not what happens in fate. No, God has designed the world and and our you know our progress as mm. I see it through it to be the ideal thing to, to make us understand shit. Because you can, un like, you talk about when you're feeling an emotion, it's very hard to describe it. But say you're having an argument with your brother or your sister when you're a kid, mm. or you're watching somebody else have an argument, mm. you know, you can see how animated they are, and, you know, and that, that feeling is just driving their... their their behaviour. It, it's sort of, it's the best way to illustrate an emotion, isn't it? Well, you, you, it seems that you think that emotions come from a different state of reality, a different realm, as you would call it. I see emotions are the dominant realm. So they exist in a separate, like... Everything feeds out of them. Do, do, do you believe in evolution? So you say a thought, right? I say an emotion creates the thought before the thought comes. You you think of the thought as the first thing. I say you had an emotion that well, created I, the thought. I wouldn't say the thought would be the first thing. Okay. I would say the emotion is the first thing. Because that's because I think that emotion is is an evolution. Yeah. Of evolution. Do you believe in evolution? Right. So you think the emotions are coming from the DNA in a sense? Not so much. I believe it's coming from the neurochemical layout of the brain, which is heavily predetermined by the genetics of the being. But like if you go, you're talking about like going further back into our evolution and stuff like that. You you must know that there was a point where it was just emotional programming and not logical thinking with words and stuff like that that hadn't been yeah. invented yet. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. emotions are the most natural yeah. product of a being. Yeah. But they existed here before a rational thought. So mm. how can they come from another reality or realm? Why why can't emotions just be purely based within 
within ourselves. Well, you say they existed here, but Every they still animal. came. They still came from this emotional realm. How do we know that? But when when we already believe and accept. The well, emotion. how do you know it wasn't? Well, because you just said that you believe that emotion is an evolved trait. Is an evolved trait. That's what you said. I said, just right? said it was there first. Yeah, so it was already here. Yeah. Before rational Before thought developed. So why couldn't? Yeah. Why, why can't it just be here? Why does it have to come from another reality? Why do we need to include that? Now, understanding of our well, let's say, let's say, uh, you know, because you, see, I will go to the plants. Um, think of a, a plant that just grows a tree, all right? A tree, um, so the tree has has emotions, okay? But where are the emotional organs? I don't know, I wouldn't say that a tree has emotions. Like when you say a tree has emotions, what emotions do you, would you say it experiences? Um, love of its neighbours. And how would that manifest itself? You mean like basically what you're saying there is, is, is genetic lineage? No, so, I think, so it, I th I think it's always it. been in the emotional realm. But to become physical... Yeah. So let's say that the earth was barren at some point there wasn't any life on it and let's just say the first life was some sort of bit of seaweed or something it wasn't but let's just say it was because it's a plant mm. the the idea that came from the emotional realm whose realm this is because every part of existence belongs to someone yeah. to to grow this thing so the first single cell organism. So it was an emotion. It was an emotion that germinated the seed. So the first single cell organism live. had emotions. Yeah, yeah. The How most did, basic. Yeah. Just and I think we've still got a plant within us. It's just the plant learnt to grow legs and move around and pick up a cup of tea well, to we, feed itself. We are. Well, uh, there are six kingdoms of life on 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 this planet. You've got animalia, which is humans and other animals. You got planta, you got bacteria, archaea bacteria, protozoa, and uh, fungi. Like they all develop from the same kind of genesis. But like, I think I got lost on track there. But the thing is, do you think that the first single cell organism that all life stems from? Well, there wouldn't have just been one single cell organism. There would have been several developed at the same time and genetically. But do you think that the first cells had emotion? Yeah. What emotion and how did that manifest? The emotion they had mm. was because these were brand new souls that never had a life. But you know, we before. experience happiness because of serotonin and dopamine and whatever. That's what causes our emotion of happiness. What causes the emotion of. I wouldn't say it causes it, I say it helps your bod physical body feel it. It's what manifests that emotion. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, there are triggers that make yeah, you feel. Plants do chemicals, don't they? Well, they photosynthesize. Then there are more chemical shit going on in the cells. Oh. Well, photosynthesis and um, what is it that makes them turn green? Chlor, chlor. Yeah, I mean they they do still kind of um, produce. Yeah. Produce. So yeah. because when a, when a plant's not happy, you know, it doesn't do that properly. Doesn't it? it has spots on the leaves or whatever, you know, it or it can get infected by a disease or whatever, but. You know, for just for, this is why I think you know why you know why we started with very simple life forms yep. was that we were souls that you know we're, we're basically newborn like so we needed just just our first our first uh, accomplishment to do would be to probably execute the DNA you know exist long enough within this and physical entity yeah. to allow the DNA processes to complete. But if you think that single cell organisms still had emotion, is what you're saying, right? And those emotions came from a different reality, right? Why is a different reality actually necessary? Because like, if that single cell organism doesn't have a soul, but it still has emotion, why is a whole different reality of emotion necessary? Because this reality, this realm, 
serves the higher realm. In what way? So we're here for... It's more like you're, the way you were expressing it, you know, why do you need that for this? It's more that this is for that. This is made for that. But what's the purpose? So that's, that's, the purpose is because that needs to experience and grow. Needs experience to grow. If we didn't have the physical realm to have experiences in, mm. like this is why we have a lifespan, isn't it? If we, if we were just born as kids and told, all right, you're going to live forever, mm. you'd be in no rush to do anything with you. you would, it, this, with these lifespans gives us sort of a, a goal of and a target and, mm. yeah, something we can concentrate on. But it seems like that you think that every reality is pretty much the same as this one and you have to go through the same things and you think that another reality stems from this one, like we will have galaxies inside us or whatever. That seems like a fractal way of thinking. Like why do you think that all these... I think the universe is fractal. fractal. You see fractal going on all over the place. Do we really though? Well... Yeah, because you you know you zo you can zoom into something and suddenly the whole picture looks completely different. Uh, take a forest, you know, you look at a forest from above, mm. you know, and it then doesn't you look like a single tree. No, it but looks like a in, carpet. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then you, you know, and, and then you can zoom in just and there's levels. Every zoom in level you go to, there's a new picture, a new understanding. But it it's changes it, doesn't it? But then that's not it. fractal, because fractal is like you zoom in, you see the same picture. No, you zoom out, fractal, you see the if same you look structure. at fractal drawings, yeah. they always, like a kaleidoscope or whatever, and you know, and you're zooming in into this bit and then it opens up, it's into changing, the, into the same isn't it? Structure. it? Yeah, well, it, it, changes into the, it claims into the it's structure. the same structure, but you wouldn't know, would you? Because well, By looking at it, you can see, <laughs> this is, we zoomed in. From one structure, no, you in. can with, in real life. Yeah, you can make sense that it's the same structure, but it the appearance looks different. Just looks different. So it feels different. But like, what do you mean? So <laughs> like, you said you said what I said sounds quite fractal. Yeah. And I said yeah, fractal is involved in the universe. Yeah, but then you say that we experience fractal. When we observe the universe. Well, when we're don't. looking at things from different levels, yeah. Do you mean like an atom looks like a solar system? Yeah. But it doesn't, though. No, but it... All right, when, but... Wait, when, when, when but we look at the planet Earth, we look at the planet Earth, it looks round and it's a globe. And then yeah. you zoom in and you see the it's, ocean, it just looks flat, or you zoom into land. But that's a different image. That's not experiencing it to be fractal. Fractal <clears> is like when you have a triangle, in like a triangle with a bunch of dots in it. You zoom into one of those dots, it happens to be another triangle with a bunch of dots in it. You zoom into one of those dots, it's a triangle with a bunch of dots in it. Well, like, I understand <laughs> fractal to be more than just that. Okay. But I still don't understand why, why do these different realities need to exist in order for this one to exist in the way in which we know it can do. This isn't own. the most important reality, clearly, because our time here is finite. When this body dies, it's not coming back again. So when we ascend into another universe, is our time there infinite? Is our time there finite? Because if it's fractal and the same, then we would exist it's, in that universe. It, when we in comparison, it's infinite, but it's not truly infinite. I don't believe that um, after... I don't believe that, say, after 300 billion years of existence, mm. um, we're going to... We may still exist for another 300 billion years, mm. but we'll be so sort of like the one love in the, in the trunk of the tree, do you know what I mean? Mm. That I think at some point our own identity will dissolve to be that we're just part of the one love. So do we keep, when we ascend into another reality, which is saves scary, easier. but... Yeah, it's a, it's a long way ahead, and I kind of partly think I might think differently in a million years. Mm. I'll I'll re I'll re question it then, sort of thing. But yeah. So when we ascend into one of these higher dimensions, do we keep our memories from this dimension? Yeah. So yeah, that's basically all you do keep is those 
and those memories that where the emotion occurred mm. are the ones that you're going to keep. So we all have universes inside us with all galaxies and stuff like that and various experiences that have taken place. How come we don't remember those? Or we don't, we're not aware of what they are? Because uh, if I have a whole galaxy inside me and there's like 10,000 civilizations or whatever, that's a fuck There's no civilizations in your galaxy. It's too new. There's no life there yet. So when's life gonna evolve inside inside me in my galaxy? When well, that will come. When and I then, die. No, not when you die. Not because obviously we're we're still using this universe because we need this universe. Yeah. And we might well need it for another millions of years before there's anything substantial within ourselves to start experiencing. So well, I think maybe Venus, maybe Venus was a planet that God grew life forms and experimented with that, mm. without children. And then, you know, because as the solar system, the sun is growing and, you know, that Venus is too hot now, you know, Earth is the next planet. The, sun, the sun's not growing. It is. It's not hot. It is. You mean the sun is getting bigger? They're all growing. Everything's growing. The space in between stars is growing. Yeah. The whole thing is growing. The universe is expanding, yeah. But, I mean, they've got their fucking catastrophic theories where everything's going to crash into each other and blow up. But that is bollocks. Yeah. They think Andromeda's going to crash into our galaxy, and that's just bollocks. Well, Andromeda is coming toward our galaxy. It's not. It's still travelling away from our galaxy. The but universe is expanding. The way, honestly, they've, they've, they've got these things so twisted and upside down, right? <laughs> yeah, like... Everything is, they know everything is growing apart from each other, but because Andromeda is growing apart slower from us, they theorise that at some point it might slow down and come back into us. Do you actually understand the difference between dark energy, which is the expansion of the universe, and gravity, which is the attractive force within the universe? And do you understand the scales that these things uh, take effect? You, when you said dark energy, no, I don't understand what Dark that is. energy is what drives the expansion. It's a the theoretical universe. thing, it doesn't actually exist. There's no. So the universe isn't expanding? There's no physical proof for dark energy. The expansion of the or universe. Or dark matter. The, the expansion of the universe is the observed theory. But only because of the. Do you know what theory means? Yeah, they've made it up. They've made up loads of stuff. Do you know what the difference is between a theory and a hypothesis? I do hypothesis. <laughs> a hypothesis is an idea, which like, yeah, you just come up with an idea as a hypothesis. But a theory is a hypothesis <coughs> which is shown to be true through observation and testing. It's just called theory. All right, That's what theory means. There's a lot of what they say that, that I really don't but, agree with. But and they cannot, say, they, they cannot prove a lot of it. But you did say the sun is expanding and all space is expanding. It, this is what that Everything's is. growing. But that's what dark energy it's, is. Call it dark energy if you want. It's a theoretical hot thing. But you say it's, not it's happening. True. They don't but you just said it's true. Yes, but they're reasoning for why it's happening. So what's it's your not, reasoning just for it happening? Because everything grows. It's growing because of just dark growing. energy. It's expanding you know because the, of um, dark energy. You know 1.618? No, where is that? The golden ratio. Oh, you mean the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. That's how it's growing. It's growing in the golden ratio. So how comes you can't accept or won't understand the idea that perhaps dark energy is a scientific term for the observation of the golden ratio? They invented dark energy because, because they thing. couldn't see the mass of things were adding up right. But according to suspicious, observ suspicious observers, he's on my side, yeah. they, haven't, they haven't taken into account plasma. Plasma does well, they waste. They take into stuff. account neutrinos. They take into account micro black holes. No, but that's dark and uh, dark matter, not dark energy. Yeah. Dark matter is the matter which we so far can't see interacts with anyway, with any light or whatever. But you can see it's there because of its gravitational properties that it has around galaxies. But dark yeah, energy. Yeah, and he's saying he's expansion. saying that model doesn't weigh up. But if you include plasma, plasma weighs something. And so apparently, and in, the, and in that dust that we see when we look towards the centre of the galaxy, yeah. a lot of it is obscured with this dust. Yeah. And within this dust, there is plasma. 
and they haven't apparently added that into their equation. That's because they're not they're not saying that's where dark matter can be observed. They're saying dark matter is observed on the outside of the galaxies. Yeah, I don't know where we're going to go with this conversation. I'm not. I, 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 yeah. I'm still trying to understand. But so you say that there's the a lot of the scientific stuff that I do not agree with. But maybe if you understood it, you might see maybe, how it translates to what you're Maybe I would. It's like, you know, you know you say something in English. You I have say thought sometimes this dark matter they're thinking about, is yeah. that the emotional realm that I'm talking about? Is it another or, universe which is yeah, somehow linked? Yeah. Well, that yeah. makes sense. Because there, 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 there could, could be, be that. there could be another universe. But from, from what I've heard, galaxies. from what I've heard, and I have looked into this at some point, you know, mm. when they're... they're this dark energy, dark matter has basically been invented. It's, so it's not something they can prove. It's to fill the gap of the what they don't know. But you do believe in dark energy, because you you you, you said that the sun well, expands and all the space expands. <clears throat> I'm so, the sun isn't expanding; it's growing. Along with all of space. Yeah. But this is what dark energy is. But you're saying dark well, energy. Well, some of it real. is. Some of it is hydrogen atoms. Yeah, but no, but that would still be what dark energy. There's a difference between dark energy and dark matter. When you're saying things like neutrinos and plasma, <coughs> that would be an answer to dark energy, uh, dark matter, but not dark no, energy. Plasma is not. Plasma is not dark. <laughs> no, this is what I'm saying. But if you can't like, detect it, it's still having an effect. You would include that as perhaps this dark matter is part of plasma. It's like what you're saying. This other guy was saying. Yeah. He's in effect trying to prove what they're saying is correct, but he's saying it's wrong because he doesn't fully understand. Well, you're just you're... assuming that. You haven't even heard him. Well, no, based on what you're saying, though. Do you believe in all science? Is, like, all science true to you? I believe in what is observed. Because you know how they come to their consensuses, you know, all these papers that they write. Through observation and, and testing. But, yeah, but they'll only accept, you know, certain people to write these papers. As long as it's said they, in a way which they understand the, and agree with. They've just got to be in that scientific community with all those letters But what you're them. saying does describe these scientific principles but in a way in which you're saying isn't scientific but like you can say something in english you can say the same thing in french if you're using different words you're saying the same thing you understand yeah, yeah i mean speaking, even to agree on people, the word scientific yeah would probably not happen well because to me so what is science the observation and kind of utilisation of the natural world. Yeah, and they're totally going beyond that, aren't they, when they're talking about dark matter? Well, because it's still part of the natural world. It might just stem from a different facet of nature. But what you're saying is there are different facets of nature, and each one's a different universe that we're caus causally linked into. What you're saying doesn't disagree with science. You just word I mean, I way. really wouldn't be able to read their papers. No, but you would be able There's to... There's no way I could go through all that fucking waffle. <laughs> yeah, but what you're saying really says do. the same thing. So I don't I want to involve so I, myself I, I, I in I it too much. You could. Uh, I wouldn't want to involve myself in it too much. But what you're saying is pretty much the same thing. Right. But you're saying that there is a purpose behind it, and you're saying you have an idea of what lies beyond the veil, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, but the one thing which I can't understand is I still can't come to terms or I still can't put together why you think that emotion, which you know to be a natural and evolved trait within all species here, has to come from a different universe. Because it is the all and the, the all that there is. It is the most important thing. So you believe that the fundamental substance or the most fundamental being or whatever or ex experience to reality it's just conscious emotion I mean if they didn't need these other realms mm. if it was just this 3D and it, it didn't require anything else wouldn't that be quite sad that you Not know really. you're, you're going to come to an end and that's it where were you before you were born? I was, uh, I was in some in someone else. Before you were. Conceived. I was in the in between phase where you're not you're not you haven't got a physical body. Um, to to use. So, but did you exist? So I think, yeah, yeah. In what way? I exist. I existed as my soul, as my true self. 
and where was your soul? Before it wasn't it was, in this physical universe at that yeah, point. Before you were born in this universe, where did your soul exist? And what in did that, it exist in that younger universe, I was explaining, beyond the black hole. In the emotional universe? In all three. So yeah. I've got all three there. It's yeah. just that my physical, uh, my physical presence, there ain't much to it. Because it it's not, it's not old enough to be able to harbour its own life yet. It's not old enough to have a, a solar system like this one. It hasn't developed enough yet to have something where you could have a sun and a planet. So I was... That universe you came from? So that's, my, that's me. That's, that's me. That's what I am. And I've been growing for four billion years, but started off as maybe just a single hydrogen atom in mm. the physical presence. Maybe that's all that began, just a single hydrogen atom. And then it got another one and another one. There's apparently as a 23 t trillion times a second um, frequency. Mm. That That is every, that's, this is my best idea at present is that gets created, that creates a hydrogen atom in your galaxy. Well, hydrogen and helium are the most abundant. Yeah, and they, you know, once they gather together, you know, hydrogen can make helium. Mm -hmm. Helium can make... All the higher elements are made within suns. I mean, they know well, that to be true. Metals, I, just dis iron, I just disagree on how they're distributed. Because I believe in the, they believe in the supernova, it yeah. blows up and everything gets spread out. I believe in the micronova, where the sun does a burp, jacks some of this shit from the centre of itself, mm. which cloud, causes a cloud in the atmosphere of the solar system, but it continues after that. It it's, continues to grow and keeps getting bigger. And every now and then, ejects the heavier elements. So is that how you think the solar system was made then? Probably. Just explain how you think this particular solar system came to be. So, well, maybe maybe some of the elements came from other Maybe stars. there was dust, you know, big dust with some plasma, you know, and the plasma sort of starts to become a ball and eventually you get a sun. Do you think that all the dust... I kind of can believe their theory that, you know, clumps of dust were collecting together and eventually formed oh, the rocky planets. planets. Like that. yeah. And that, you know, the, I kind of couldn't go with that, that acquired theory. Yeah. And I think it's awesome that, you know, Jupiter will probably be a future sun. We'll have, we'll have two suns. And that won't happen. Jupiter will be a sun. It's made of the same elements with all the, the planets. Sun, but it's nowhere near as heavy enough to cause. No, fusion. not yet. But it won't be. What well, why not? Because there's not enough. Um, oh, because Andromeda's going to come and crash into us. No, because there's not <laughs> enough. Andromeda is coming <laughs> towards our galaxy. Okay, so dark energy. Yeah. No, let's is, don't don't tangent the, now. Forget Andromeda. Come on, why Jupiter can't be a sun? Because there's just not enough mass for it to cause fusion. Yeah, eventually there will be. Where's it? Because they're still from? growing. Well. Things fall into Jupiter, don't the they? The expansion of the universe. We see things. Jupiter is a big collector of, you know, debris Comets and, and stuff, stuff like yeah. that, but not materials that are going to cause fusion. Yeah, but wait till the next micronova are from the sun, when it ejects a whole load of more stuff. What do you mean when it's flo flo flowing off solar flares? With and stuff every like twelve thousand years, we when get it's, one. It's flowing off um, solar flares. It's a. Uh, it, it's obviously more than a solar flare. It's, this is a big one, this is a big fucking... Well, it's plasma which is ejected from the sun. Not plasma, the, the heavier elements that is... I believe our sun can create everything up to iron. Heavy elements? Yeah. yeah. It can't, I don't think it's big enough to create anything heavier than iron, so anything heavier than that apparently should have come from other places. Heavier stars. But... When, so every 12,000 years, it do a micronova, and it will be a bit, you know, because it will fill the dust between us and the sun. It would be like at least three years of darkness. Mm. Could plunge us into an ice age. But what you're talking about is just solar flares. 
you have big spots. No, that's more than a solar flare. That this thing would not just come out of one side; it would come out of all sides of the sun. It would be almost a supernova, almost like the sun is exploding. But there's there's a good evidence that for the past. 60,000 years, every 12,000 years, there's been some the sun sort goes of through catastrophe. Cycles. Yeah, but like, it, it's going, it, but it's not, it's not like a micronova, it's just like a big solar flare that's ejecting. Well, you this can call it that if you want. <laughs> yeah, see, like, you, 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 you describe things, you use different words, but it's me, yeah, but and then you refuse to accept That's that because the no, the that's because thing. it's more than a super, super flare, you know, it would be off the charts in terms of their X-class flares and shit like that, yeah? yeah? This would be off the, no, it's because it's into the novas. So there's not just supernova. Do you know what? Do you there know what, are different classes of novas. And recently, you know recently, they predicted that a star was going to die. Because they Google saw it, di yeah, they saw yeah. it dim, right? Yeah. But it's come back, it's cleared, it's... Oh, you mean that star where you thought maybe there was a Dyson sphere or something? It happened to be a comet that was passing through with a bunch of fucking dust cloud. It was... It was it, the view. Is that what they said it was? Yeah. Because, you know, they, had, they thought it was a dying star. Yeah. They thought, we might finally experience a dying star, right? Yeah. It wasn't. It came back. So for whatever reason they... Comment decided comment. it was because yeah. <laughs> they basically had to come up with a reason for it well, yeah so they could have said oh we now actually know that we can get a micronova but that's not this, a micronova this, we don't know that no, but they they're just guessing that it was a comet but that you're went just past guessing how do was, they know it was a comet you're guessing it was a super well, yeah, micronova yeah. so why is your guess more why should it be accepted? Why is theirs better than mine? Because they're actually observing it with instruments that can detect what's taking place, whereas you're just thinking about it with yeah, but ideas. Yeah, this guy's special observers. He'd yeah. be he'll be looking at the same data that they're getting with a suspicious mind. With with their closed mind. But you're describing the same things they are with different words. But theirs is bullshit. What comet passed and it made it cloudy? That's bollocks. It's not bollocks though. Why is why 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 is that more bollocks than your idea that it was going into a micronova? Because if that happens, well, so they got often, a picture of something that looks like well, a comet going past. But if what you're past. saying happens so often, it would be happening all the fucking time to observable stars. We're not seeing that happen. So what you're saying should be complex. Well, how long have we been looking at this? How long have we been looking at the stars Since with this, such this clarity? Since they've been able to see the stars. Is it, it, how long have they been looking at the stars? Right, how clarity? long have we had? A satellite in space looking at the stars because they can't look at all the stars all the time. No, but we actually can they're doing see their stars. work, aren't they? They ha happen but to with notice your eyes, You have a look up at the sky. Yeah, but we're not going to notice a fucking one of those stars having a not micronova. Not a distant star. No. Maybe our closest star. Maybe the observable stars. You know the stars <clears> that we can observe with our eye aren't all stars in the galaxy. It's a very no, yeah, very no, small no, circle. No, no, very very small circle. No, no, no. But we will still see dimming taking place in but all that, of them. What? I wouldn't necessarily myself notice if one of those stars dimmed for a few years. How often do you look at the stars? Not very often these days. When was the last time you looked at you looked at the sky for the purpose of looking at the stars? Well, I don't know, say a year ago. So what's the likelihood of you seeing any dimming? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what you're saying is, like, what happens with our sun doesn't happen with any other oh. star. Apart from one particular star that they say... It happens with all of them. And we've experienced Beetlejuice potentially have one. Would you accept that? I accept that, according to the data that the geese are showing, that at some point, perhaps in our lifetime, it might turn into a supernova. I don't accept at all that they're saying it's micronova -ing. But they thought it was going to, and it didn't. It they haven't back. said when it's going to. And I think there, has been, be there has been another one as well. Bet the geese, the right shoulder of Orion. This is the star which they think is going to go supernova. They haven't said when. It could happen tomorrow, it could happen within the next... Yeah, I mean, the years. time span of these things, you know, stars, are, stars' time span is millions of years, yeah. whereas we, we're looking at a but fraction of But we're not seeing that, any we? micronovas. We're seeing, we're seeing stars go through their natural cycles, and then stars born and stars die. Stars give off flares yeah. all the time. But this, as is, this is our closest star... Yeah. If we really wanted to know if this is happening, yeah. you know, we can look in the past and see what's happened to Earth. On Earth. 
yeah yeah and see if that is as a result of uh, a micronova there are other planets though that we can also see yeah, is there any yeah. Evidence but again, like this is our closest one and we can actually study it properly. Yeah, I mean, there are other planets in our solar system that share the same sun, which we can also look at and be like, oh, this may have happened yeah. because of the solar system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But not as, of that? Well, what there's we evidence. Seeing? I'll tell you if you want. Like, okay. because, right, so what, so sun does a micronova. Okay. There's loads now of dust of heavier elements in between the sun and the planets. So that's going to have a cooling effect. Mm. And what do we see on Earth? Every probably is twelve thousand years, ice ages. Thirteen thousand years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So ice an ice age is caused. But is that happening on? And Venus? then is that happening on Mars? Is it happening on um, fucking Jupiter? So Mars is further away. Yeah. So it's uh, still within the habitable zone. Yeah, zone. and that the, there is there is um, evidence of Mars for incredible temperature increase. And, but you what know, you're saying is decrease. You there'd be the the the, de the decrease, and then there would be you know once the dust has cleared, mm. you'd get an increase. And if the if like I say the sun is growing all the time, maybe at some point Mars did get quite heated up so that um, the ice melted and you see those evaporated canals yeah, and. Yeah. Might not have evaporated. Might have just refrozen. We see evidence of solar flares happen all the time. With our aurora borealis and the fucking one on Jupiter as well, mm -hmm. but we don't see any evidence of catastrophes every thirteen thousand years on any other planet but our own. Yeah, but they wouldn't have a catastrophe because there's no life on the other planet. But there would still be an effect upon the planet, which can be observed. But Maybe also, you you're, be for your argument, you're choosing to look at planets that we can't look properly at. We can look at a hell of a lot closer at Mercury, Venus, Mars. And, and all the planets in our solar system and exoplanets. You know I mean, we, we, we look at these planets no, very, very well. compared to Earth. We have more fucking maps. You can go and dig a hole in the Earth. We have more information about the surface of Mars than we do the surface of this oh. planet because most of our planet is under the water. We, we can map out the entire moon, but we can't map out the entire planet that we're on because most of it's under water. We can observe. But what evidence would you expect to see on these other planets? Some type of scarring. Some Why? Of, Why a scar? Well, because if, 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 like, if the sun's burping out all kinds of shit and it's causing massive cataclysms on our planet, those cataclysms, the way like it affects the surface of a planet or the chemical composition of a planet, you would also see similar things, if not the same things, on the other planets. So when I say scarring, I don't mean like a, a massive cut. I mean some kind of erosion, some kind of effect that's taken place. But we don't see that. I don't know. I wouldn't like know it. what you'd see. Like, just dust would be landing on the planet, so there'd be accumulating minerals and stuff like that. How long do you think it would take for all this dust to be... There's all this dust that's been kicked out of the sun. How long do you think it would take for it to coalesce into something else? I mean, obviously, I don't know. I'd just be guessing, but I'd be it'd guessing... Be a fuck if, time I'm time. guessing a few years. Yeah, a lot. Because it would have it all be cleared out by every other planet that's orbiting around yeah. that base. It would take a shit ton. So you'd end up with gas, gas... But I suppose gas, initially... Gas. I suppose initially you would have a heating effect before the dust. If the sun did a micronova, probably mm. going to get hot and big and, you know, as it's exploded, that's probably going to cause quite a dramatic but the sun's not expanding. and quick like, heating effect. Okay, but the sun's not expanding. Not in any way. It's expanding. How many times bigger is the sun than Earth? Yeah, but it hasn't grown to be it's that big. It's a million big. times bigger than Earth. It was Earth. created that big. No, you don't know that. How do you know that? Because that's just how it happened. <laughs> well, how do you know? How can you just say it was created that big? When the sun came into being, it was as big was as Was the earth was. created this big? Well, the earth grew. It did? Yeah. So the earth grew. Do you know, explain to me how our sun was created. Do you know this expansion theory of the earth? You mean like... All the rocks came together and created a, a oh, big just rock, in and the a last bigger rock, and a bigger rock. Or how old is the ocean crust? The planet is four point five billion, four point three billion years yeah. old. And how old is ocean crust? What do you mean ocean crust? So if the, you the surface of the floor underneath the sea, yeah, it's as old as the surface. No, of the... it's not. <sighs> you, if you look, if you do a search, it. if you do a search, I'm right? telling you how the ocean came to be. Ocean crust age, right? Yeah. 
you can see it's in bands and none of it is older than 300 million years old. The, where the rift is, is 10 million years old and then there's bands. Every 10 million years, there's yeah. about five or six bands and they, they get a bit smaller as you a get... A band of sediment. Well, they say the crust, like the, the crust of the ocean floor, yeah. is all younger, and it's in bands, and you can see it clearly. It's been expanding. No, the the, the, the Earth has, ha, it still has, in its inside it, a fucking massive well of water. There's more water inside the Earth than what there is on the surface of the Earth. The like, water is only within the crust. No, it's on the crust. Yeah, but it's not in the man. You're not talking about in the mantle and stuff. I'm not talking about in the lava. No, I'm talking about within the surface of the planet. Yeah, not just on top of the surface of the planet, but like through geological changes of how. Do you want more? Yes, please. Coffee? Yeah. Carry on. Um, due to changes of the planet, the water has come out, and it's come upon the crust. And then the reason why you have different levels of rock on top of different levels of rock is because of volcanic explosions. Do you know how an island is created? A volcano underneath the ocean blowing up and spewing all that shit up into the surface. Like in Hawaii, like we see in Hawaii and yeah. Iceland. Yeah. 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 But that's why you have like different layers underneath the ocean. Are you warm enough, by the way? Yeah. You're all right. Yeah. That's. But I still can't understand. In order, no, to, in, order in, in order for your theory to be correct. We need Which to one? Novus. Or are we going back to my emotional Emotion. realm? Yeah, good. Because these other things aren't my theories, so we yeah. should probably like stay out of that. I still don't understand why we need to have... I understand why we need different dimensions in order to exist in this dimension. Because you can't have a third dimension or fourth dimension space without two dimension space or one dimension space. But why do we need a three-dimensional space outside of our three-dimensional space, which is just the motion, which is interacting with having some kind of causal effect on this one. No, I don't yeah, no, I like happens. this because you're asking the wrong question and there's a, and that is the answer to your question. What's the right question? Because you're coming at it sort of saying, If you were in the emotional realm, yeah. you'd be saying, why do we need this physical realm? And would I be thinking spiritual? about that, though? Or would I already have the knowledge? Yeah, this is the thing. Because the feeling, the feeling does have the knowledge. So in that other realm, I wouldn't have to ask these questions, because I would already know. Yeah. But the reason I'm asking is because I'm not in that reality. I'm yeah. in this one. Yeah, and that is yeah. the answer to your question, because you, you kind of remind me of me in a way. When I was at, thir you know, in my early thirties, yeah. that, you know, I had kind of disconnected practically with feeling, mm. and and um, because there, I probably because I'd had feelings that I didn't know how to deal with, mm. and that was a problem, mm. and it was, it, and it. It's the sort of yeah. But you understand because, what I'm saying. Because it's a problem you can't even begin to realise how you can solve this problem. Because we've become we've been taught wrong, right? We've been from our age we've been the blind has led the blind. And this yeah. is this is the AJ Miller stuff. This is, you know, his best teachings is about just feeling the emotions. But he tells you how you, how you deny them, how you evade them, how you make excuses not to even go there. But these are AJ Miller's ideas. Right? Yeah, these are. But he's spot on with this, and I've gone through the practice, and it's true. And that what he calls a fear block around an emotion, because mm. once you've decided not to feel an emotion, mm. the next time that comes up, because you got rid of it last time. Now there's an added little fear block to it. Mm. You 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 sense that fear block even before you really sense the emotion. But these emotions are coming from a different universe, right? Yeah, but it this is you in a different universe. Affecting yeah, this but it is the you. It's the big you. It's the you that existed before you you were born, and the it's you that will now. exist afterwards. Yeah, it's always existing. Yeah. So my emotions. 
don't fully exist with me right now. They exist in a different universe, in a different... And they're just there waiting to be dealt with, yeah. So every emotion which I'm going to feel in my future, and it's already feeling you have, in this you, There's no way of escaping these. You have to face them eventually. Okay, I'll accept that, but what I can't understand is why, why does it need to exist in a whole other universe in order to... Because doesn't that take away my... Do you believe in free will? Do yeah. you believe in... So, so if there's a free will, which I don't fully accept, but if there's like a free... Is that your front door? No. Oh. no, no. Doesn't having all these emotions already lined up for us suggest that we don't have a free will that everything is predetermined and all out. Because if, if I'm supposed to learn how to face my emotions, why does that mean anything if they already exist as they're always, always going to? I suppose you made the free will decision before. It was the higher... The, high, the higher self, like the, the person who knows they're an infinite being, mm. is then you're being your higher self. Mm. So you made that decision before this life. So I don't have any decisions to make in this life. I've already made them all. The decision was made by you, your higher self, that you'd be all right with it. So I you in effect don't the, have free will. You accepted. I did have. You free did will. have. You had it then. And in another universe, I still do have. And free you do will. have it now but because I don't have it here. you do. 